everything's working as intended. <clears throat> what is your goddamn game? I'm using two Genos, Hellish Blizzard and I still have triple staff Lily deployed. hanging on to my underwear. This is round 10 of auto. I used 240 points. Not smart. I want to upgrade. Level 26 now. Level 26. Not bad. So day five, I've averaged five. I've averaged five levels a day. That's good. That's better than starting on day two, three and being level 15. Okay. That's where the, probably a lot of players are. Oh, of course, there's players way, 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 way past me. We're just trying to curve out. Curve out. Nice average. <clears throat> what am I doing here? Team level rewards are available. Team level 26 claim reward. 40 level 2 EXP cards. Looking at world chat for a second and not joining it. So what am I doing? Upgrade to data 30. Yeah. I open that quest log. I have this daily quest.
Well, I guess I'll go to the movie theater. <clears throat> it's raining outside. Looking for the movie theater. Can't beat them, join them. Smash the like, hit subscribe. Zombie man is God stuck. Loose manhole cover.
I have to buy ten. <clears throat> I have to buy food. Okay, Speed Mobile. The phone store. Oh no! Don't start anything. Shop. Mm. Buy tea. Hit like. Press subscribe. Vending machine, there it is. Fine. Dishes for sale. Nope. Talking to anybody. Some. Oh, what? Ten of everything? This is good. This is good. 30 drink, 30 consumable, 40 consumables. I'll end up with 90, 90 consumables after this purchasing spree. Ten gallons of strawberry syrup. 10 gallons of mint special drink. Now. Trying to purchase dreamy durian milk again.
There's the cinema. Now I'm in the cinema. Daily movie. Ticket inspector, Squish the King. Easy mode. C rank. Ah, I finished. That was so much more fun than I thought. 
triple stack Lily is here. Hit the like, press subscribe, hit the bell. <clears throat> LeBron James with the Knicks. Towel interview. Okay. Patrick Ewing was better. Patrick Ewing was better than LeBron. I should get a, a Grant. Grant. Of course, Grant. Show the channel some love with a subscription. Rac Raccoon is streaming. Let's watch Raccoon. What's he playing? Derby Stallion 3, He had less than 25% points of the entire game. 
Seahawks in a win at Chicago. Milwaukee was down by 24 after the first quarter at Dallas and still defeated the Mavericks 129 to 117. Giannis Antetokounmpo 48. It's just a 50 point Lakers game with extra free throws. Ending the Knicks nine game winning streak 113-105 and Cleveland won its fifth game in a row 117-101 at San Antonio. NASCAR season was due to start tomorrow night on Fox TV. Instead, it was moved up to tonight on FS1 and the clash winner at the LA Coliseum was Denny Hamlin. Kyle Busch finished second. Rain is coming to Los Angeles. College hoops, North Carolina beat Duke. Tennessee won at Kentucky. I'm Steve DeSager. Fox Football Live, and we're recapping your full day of football. This is Fox Football Live. Open score, touchdown. From the plays to post game, your football teams are wrapped here. Fox Football Live is now. Is that even legal? Live from the TireRack.com studios of Fox Tire. Sports Radio, here's Darren Torres and Jason Martin. Welcome in, everybody. Hour two. Torres and Martin, Fox Sports Radio. We are broadcasting live from the TireRack.com studios. TireRack.com will help you get there. An unmatched selection, fast, free shipping, free road hazard protection, and over 10,000 recommended installers. TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be. Hour two, as I said, talk about a lot of different stuff. Hour one, one from the NBA to the NFL. Back to the NBA. Now we head back to the NFL where the college, the college I'm all over the place. I'm watching, I got college basketball on the TV. But NFL coaching carousel has essentially wound down barring something shocking. And certainly, listen, you know, Jim Harbaugh had been hired by the Los Angeles Chargers when we were on air last week, Jason. But this week, he did give his first press conference. His introductory press conference was uh, just a few days ago. And he said a lot of interesting stuff. But I will say this. Lorena, why don't you pull up the sound? Lorena, Pat, uh, let's get that sound of, um, of Jim Harbaugh. Here's what he had to say, the thing that stood out about uh, the first press conference that he had. One thing I know was Los Angeles, Southern California, they respect talent, effort, and winning. And it needs to be multiple, multiple championships. That was Jim Harbaugh in his first press conference. Jason, I, I don't want to get into, like, you know, will he win multiple? Like, this is dumb. But I guess what I would say is I find this interesting is obviously, look, Harbaugh has, it's well documented. He's had success every single place that he has gone. He is a college champion, uh, coached in the Super Bowl, all that. But he's also entering a very tough AFC with a division with just an absolute juggernaut of an organization with the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, Mahomes isn't going anywhere. I don't think Andy Reid is going to retire if Mahomes keeps playing at the level that he has. Like, I guess the question I have is, like, what, what do you deem realistic for Jim Harbaugh and this team going forward? Because a lot of talent already in the building, but obviously tough division and a very tough conference in the AFC. Aaron, I have no idea. I think that what Harbaugh is acknowledging is right. He's actually going from one scenario to its exact opposite. He's going from the school, the one that matters win or lose in football. Michigan, we're going to talk about Michigan even when they're not great. We're still talking about Michigan all the time. And inside the state, everybody's always talking about the Michigan football program as well. You're going to the Chargers, where half the time I forget that you're not in San Diego. Oh, uh, the number of people that I heard over the last three weeks, oh, the San Diego Chargers have fired Jim Harbaugh. I'm like, wow, they've been in L.A. for like seven, eight years now. But anyway. I mean, I literally was talking, I actually said on the air a couple different times, now that you mentioned that, I talked about how he started his career at the University of San Diego, which is true, but it's not relevant because they're not in San Diego anymore. Like, he has coached a lot in California, but he's going to, he's not going to the Rams, where Sean McVay's already built something. He's not going to the Dodgers. He's not going to the Lakers. He's not going to USC. He's not even going to UCLA. He's going to the Chargers. And so he's saying... What's true? Uh, he understands that there is a challenge that comes with taking this job in making it relevant locally. And to do that, it is going to require winning on the highest level. It's going to 
finally exercise the charger demons of decades and years and years past and win a title and then come back and compete for multiple championships. I think he's Did somebody that. press I like that? He's taking the, the Rams for only having one. I think that in general, he is acknowledging what we all know, the running joke about when they play at home, are they really playing a home game? and things of that nature. I think it's more of that. Like, if we're going to sit here and try to prognosticate what they're going to do. I mean, he didn't win one when he was in San Francisco, but he got awfully close. It's going to depend on the personnel, the health, the rest of the division. You talk about the Chiefs, we know what they are. What's Sean Payton going to do in year two in Denver? What's Antonio Pierce's Raiders going to look like going forward? There's going to be a lot of things that we can't predict right now. What we can predict is... Jim Harbaugh, at least for a time, I understand the propensity to wear out his welcome, but Jim Harbaugh is going to coach well because that's what he does. He's going to coach well. He's going to make them relevant because of his star power and nothing else. And if his synergy and chemistry is right with Justin Herbert and they just don't screw up the building process around him, uh, they can win a championship. But it ain't going to be easy. And I think that Harbaugh, I don't think Harbaugh is building expectation. He is acknowledging the obvious, which is I am going to a program that's not really relevant, and I want to change that. It's almost like what he did for Stanford. Stanford wasn't relevant. He got there. It was relevant. It's the same thing with the Chargers. Well, and I, I would even say to a degree with Michigan. I mean, Michigan's obviously one of the biggest brands in the sport, but they were coming off a 5-7 and seven year, and it hadn't really been about – what 10 12 15 years since they had really been relevant in the way that um, Michigan fans kind of think and expect to be now I know you know maybe it wasn't 15 years maybe it was about seven or eight but point being is that that brand had fallen on hard times as well and that was something that stood out to me as well as in that press conference is the understanding of what the expectation is in Los Angeles. You know, we mentioned Kyle Coward last uh, uh, hour, but he says this all the time. He's 100% right. Is that Los Angeles, there's just, there's there's so much to do in Los Angeles. This isn't Green Bay. Um, this isn't Minnesota, which, it, it, you know, it's kind of, it gets kind of cold and you got nothing to do but sit inside and watch the Vikings on Sunday. Like, there is a lot to do. There, and, and by the way, there's just a lot of ways to spend discretionary income, as you said. Uh, USC, UCLA, they're both going to the Big Ten. They, you know, those schedules are going to be better. <laughs> Obviously, the Rams, it goes without saying. Uh, I live 29 years in Los Angeles at zero income. Los Angeles expects to have winners, and I'm ready to do that. I think the thing that will be interesting to me is winning cures all. Um, but I I'm curious, they're going to win is – one, is his brand big enough to elevate the Chargers into, I guess, maybe like a, a, a national talking point, right? Like, like every Monday morning, we're always going to talk about the Cowboys and the Packers and Mahomes and, and Brady when he was in the league. And it was like, we never talked about Tampa, and then Brady was there, and now we talk about him. We really don't, I don't remember people talking about KC very much, even though they were pretty good consistently until Mahomes got there. Buffalo with Josh Allen. Are we going to be talking about the Los Angeles Chargers in that way? Are they going to be an A block? They beat the 49ers this year. I think they will. And I think in San Francisco without Jim Harbaugh. Harbaugh. The only time we talked about it was when they got embarrassed with Brandon Staley. So I, I think it's going to be interesting because I do think he is unquestionably going to elevate that brand, certainly nationally. And obviously I would expect if the national you know stuff comes, then I expect locally as well. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely going to raise their profile. And you marry that to Justin Herbert. They have a quarterback that's fun to watch that you can market. The problem has been it's been a mediocre result with injuries and with weird late game decisions. The problem is the football is a superior product played in Los Angeles. Coach and all this. Now you're going to have that. Now you're going to have the A block kind of coach, the one that's going to say the thing in the press conference or is going to do the thing during the game or whatever. I'm surrounded by traitors. I'm in, a, I'm in a world surrounded by traitors. They're all Raider fans. They're all San Francisco fans. I don't get any support. They, they need support. I'm here for them. 
so they, so God will save my city because there's one pure person here. 